Hello. Today we're going to talk about California's natural hazards. We've covered this stuff briefly in our earthquake units, at least part of the um, part of the hazards. So I'll try to go through the earthquake section more quickly. But we are going to introduce some new hazard is, hazards as well that we haven't talked about previously. Remember, in these notes, you can always pause, rewind, uh, and stop in order to uh, get all the notes down you need. Uh, so here we go. California's natural hazards. Uh, a natural hazard is an event that results from the earth processes uh, and that can cause damage and endanger human. The first set of hazards we're going to talk about are the ones that are caused by earthquakes. Now if we remember from our earthquake unit, we do have the San Andreas Fault running through the state of California. Uh, it is a huge fault and it causes some major earthquakes and a lot of these uh, natural hazards are a result of those earthquakes. The first one we're going to talk about are tsunamis. They are very rare uh, in California. A tsunami is a very large wave. It's formed by an earthquake in the ocean which displaces or shifts part of the ocean floor. Um, it also can form from an underwater landslide because California is on the coast of an ocean and we happen to have a very large fault uh, just that goes through the north of our state, there is a potential for an earthquake to happen off of the coast. And so uh, here we can see if the earthquake happens along a fault line that's in the ocean, this would never happen if it's on the land, only if it's in the ocean. Um, when that plate moves, it can cause an upward wave and that wave then spreads out and it comes along and does damage to the coastline. So this actually is a picture not from California, but from uh, another tsunami that had hit uh, in Indonesia uh, probably about 10 years ago. But you can see the amount of destruction. It's not a huge, one huge big wave. It's imagine um, many, many, many big waves that come one after another after another and just overwhelm the shoreline and get into the countryside. Uh, here's a picture of the tsunami waves coming over the countryside of uh, Japan in the earthquake from just a few years ago. Um, you can see there are trees here. This used to all be land and the water has come all the way over the land and is destroying houses and, and unfortunately killing people along the way. Uh, in California, we can see the northern part of the state is a very high risk and then it gets moderate. Uh, it, kind of right around San Francisco has a moderate to high risk of a tsunami and as we go down the coastline it is a high risk and right here right where my pointer is now is where Long Beach is and we are at the very edge of the high risk area for tsunami again these are very rare but it could happen um, seismic shaking this is uh, the measure of how much ground movement occurs during an earthquake we've seen this when we talked about earthquakes here's our our seismogram uh, showing shaking. If we look at the state of California and where the potential for shaking is, you can see the biggest potential for shaking is right along the San Andreas Fault. No surprise there. And as we get in here, it's less and less and less. But again, if we look right down here, right where the line goes down to the bottom, there's Long Beach. Uh, we are in the uh, high shaking range and uh, can expect to get earthquakes often. The next thing is liquefaction. This occurs um, when water-soaked soil turns to a thick, soupy liquid during an earthquake. So how does that happen? We can have normal land like this, and you can see all the pieces of, of soil and rock are close together. Uh, water usually fills up those spaces and between the sediment grains, but uh, the grains still touch, and the friction holds them together. But during an earthquake, it shakes them apart. And when it shakes them apart, the liquid in there makes it flow just like a liquid and essentially it turns into quicksand while the earth is shaking. Once the earth stops shaking, it all goes back to normal. But what you can have is situations like this. Here's a car that essentially sank in during liquefaction. And then once, liquefac once the earthquake was over, that all solidified again. Hopefully there was nobody in that car. Um, here are some big buildings that were built um, that the entire building started to shake to sink so liquefaction can be a, a, a very dangerous and scary thing 
The next thing we're going to talk about, again, with earthquakes are landslides. Uh, earthquakes often cause, cause loose rock and soil on the slopes of, of mountains and hills to move. Um, basically, we have little tension cracks and a landslide falls down the hill and we've got destruction based on that. So this is a result of an earthquake happening. Um, this does not have to be wetland or anything like that. It can just be the side of a mountain essentially shaking off. And here again, you can see along the line of the San Andreas is where the majority of the landslide um, instances are going to be. Uh, but as you get up north, it actually gets more because there's more mountainous areas there. Whereas down south, it's more desert-ish areas. All right, so those are our earthquake um, hazards. We're going to move on to uh, California's volcanic hazards. Natural hazards from a volcano or from volcanic eruptions in California include uh, three different things. We can have a hazard of the ash that's spewed out or the lava that flows out or the volcanic gases that come out. So here's an, a picture of ash from a volcano. You can see that ash when it comes out of a volcano is very hot. It can actually uh, burn up trees and grass and land and start fires all by itself. And if a person happened to be in there, they could die just from the volcanic ash. Absolutely. Uh, here's a lava flow. Uh, if, a lo if a volcano erupted in California, we'd certainly have lava flowing. And finally, there are gases that are um, spewed out of a volcano when it erupted, erupts. And sometimes those gases are poisonous. So if you are close enough to the eruption, it could uh, definitely, definitely... Uh, kill someone. In the state of California, there are 20 volcanoes. Uh, luckily for us, none are active. You can see these are the little triangle ones. So we have one there and one here. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Um, wow, well, I don't see 19 and 20. But there are supposedly 20 of them in here. Um, Again, none are active. We don't. We're not. We don't worry about them uh, erupting, but it's possible. The third type of hazard that we have in California are uh, hazard from storms, and uh, so here's a storm coming in to hit California. Um, there are two different storm hazards that we face in California. The first is a mud flow. A mud flow is a mass of very wet soil and uh, sometimes rock that just flows quickly downhill. So we have a situation where it rains a lot and the land, because it's very dry, uh, oftentimes we, like right now, we're in a drought and so there aren't a lot of plants to hold that, land, that mud uh, in place. And so if it does rain all of a sudden, uh, oftentimes these uh, mud, the, the soil turns to mud very quickly and it flows down the hill. And we get situations like this where we get a mud slide a mud flow down the hill. Now again, this is a different thing than a landslide. Landslides don't have to be wet and it's from an earthquake. A mud flow is the muddy area, again, after getting wet from a rainfall, sliding down the side of a hill or a mountain. Um, here are some other pictures of mud flows. This one is coming over and, and covering up houses. Um, you can see some houses here that have been hit with a mud flow. Uh, this can be super dangerous. Here's a house that's halfway covered in mud. And here's somebody standing on his roof when his entire house basically got covered in mud. So it is super dangerous. And it is something that we worry about in California because it off, we often go through long periods of dry spells where the plants die away. And if the plants aren't there for the roots to hold on to, those, to the mud, as soon as it rains, that mud's going to go. So mud flows are very common and very dangerous. Our last uh, hazard is flooding. Uh, flooding occurs when too much rain and melting snow fill river channels in a short period of time, uh, or an excessive amount of rainfall causes dams and levees to fail. We, like I said before, we move around a lot of water in California um, because most of the water, most of the rain happens in Northern California and we need to get that to Southern California. And in those areas that we're moving waters, the aqueducts and whatnot, they have dams to, to hold things in and, and also these other things that are called levees that basically hold the water back and sometimes those fail. And uh, if that were to happen, we have situations like this where we have flooding. Um, you can see a road here on the background, but all these houses were completely flooded by water. Uh, here's some other examples 
uh, in California where roads have been flooded, uh, people's cars have been flooded. And again, if you are in a situation where it floods to the point where you have nowhere to go and you can't swim well, or there's an infant or a baby or an elderly person, certainly floods can kill people. So where in um, California do we see floods? It, this is much more sporadic. You can see a lot of it can happen right here in the um, Central Valley, along with um, some other flood areas up north and down south, right here in, um, in Los Angeles proper as well. So those are our major California natural hazards. Um, they do fall into three categories. Again, earthquake, volcanic, and storm. And uh, you do need to know uh, all of the different ones for each of the different categories. I will see you in class.